Okay, so no guesses for what I'm speaking about today. It is multiplication. We are going to speak multiplication until you multiply. We are going to speak multiplication until there's no space in the room. We're going to speak multiplication until your MC doubles, triples, quadruples. We are going to speak it, sing it, declare it until it becomes a reality. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. And I'm going to be different today and just ask us to stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 31. Okay. Shall we go? One, two, three, go. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. If you're not opening your mouth, it's hard to read without opening your mouth, to read in concert. So let's go together. Which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may take your seats. Let me read it in the ESV. It says, he put another parable before them. Now, when you read Matthew 13, it is parable after parable after parable all around the seed. And I was laughing to myself as Pastor Victor this morning (laughs) (laughs) Hey, by, by default. As he, as he spoke on the seed, because Matthew 13 has three parables, one after the other, talking about the seed. So I thought it was very smart of God that today I'm going to talk about the seed and Victor spoke about the seed. You see, when God says something one time, Pay attention. When God says something two times, pay double attention. When God says something three times, you better get moving because he's shouting. So Matthew 13, we have three seed parables bunched together. Jesus tells parable after parable, after parable about seed. Actually, sometimes I like the Message Bible. The Message Bible says this in verse 34. It says, all Jesus did that day was tell stories. A long storytelling afternoon. Now, sometimes I like message, but for this time, as my Ugandan brethren would say, no, please. It was not story after story. It wasn't a long afternoon of storytelling. He is talking about the seed, not just for good stories. He is giving us key principles that govern the kingdom. Tell your neighbor key key principles. Back to back, He teaches about seed. Why does God give so many stories and drum in the whole thing about seed? Why? Because God always starts things in seed form. Seed is a principle of the kingdom. Yes. Over and over, Jesus keeps repeating and likening the kingdom to seed. He teaches seed 
principles because you will never understand how the kingdom works unless you understand how seed works. And unless you understand that everything God ever has done, will do, will always follow the principle of the seed. So somebody say the principle of the seed. Mm. So now I want to, my, my, sermon, my sermon title is Multiplication Dash Nesting Places. Nesting Places. Now here are my observations. Today I want to take, I'm not going to take the three parables. I'm taking just this one about the seed that you've just read. And I want us to top and tail it. So we're going to focus at the top and then we'll jump to the bottom. Now at the top, when he says, he, the first thing he says, that the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. In the ESV it says, it's like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in its field. Full stop. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is larger than the ground garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. So here are my observations. Number one, everything kingdom does not start at the size it ends. Tell your neighbor, don't measure me yet. Don't measure my MC yet. Don't measure my bank account yet. Don't measure my anointing yet. Tell your neighbor, you can take your anointometer. Because the things of the kingdom always begin small. Somebody shout, I am still in seed form. Where I am going to end is not dictated to how I start. In fact, if we are to follow the principle of this verse, the smallest one is one becomes the greatest one. So principle number one is kingdom things don't start at the end. They start as seeds. My second observation on this thing. If God is in something, it will not be ready made. You want me to slow down? <laughs> If God is in something, it will not be delivered to you ready-made. It will have potential, but it will need working on. Mm. God does not, you know, like when we were growing up in Uganda, um, ready-made was like next level. If you wore something that was done by a seamstress in your village, you were not, what was wrong with you? But if you wore something that came from London, ready-made, then, you know, like, you would tell everybody, this one is ready-made. There is a problem with ready-made. Ready-made does not necessarily fit you. Ready-made, when we came here, then we discovered that actually bespoke is more important than ready-made. And one thing I've discovered about the kingdom of God is God's things are not delivered to you ready-made. Let me talk to my single sisters over here. You do not get your husband fully packaged 
If you are looking for ready-made, it may not fit you properly. You need to find raw material and work together and get the whole thing to the full potential. I thought the brothers would back me. If God is in the church, there will always be room for improvement. I remember um, when I was growing up, when the teachers would mark my work and say room for improvement, I used to get so upset because I wanted to be top. And I, I felt like room for improvement is a judgment. It's an indictment. It feels like defeat. And I remember coming to the Lord as a young girl. And I was really disappointed when I discovered that the church has room for improvement. That the pastors have room for improvement. That they're not perfect. It's not ready-made. That there are flaws. And then I discovered that in the kingdom, there is always room for improvement. Things are not delivered perfect. So when you come to church and you notice that there is room for improvement, welcome to the kingdom of God. There is always room for growth, room for increase, room for improvement, room for the next level. We are moving from glory to glory. While we are at this level, there is room for improvement. So Turn to somebody next to you and say, if I look like a work in progress, it's because I am. Tell the other neighbor, if you think I need to grow, you should have seen me last year. And that is the kingdom. I am not everything that I am, am aiming to be. But I'm better than I was last year. And I'm better than I was the year before. And I am moving. I am growing. I am improving. I am becoming the oak. I am improving. There is still room for improvement. But I'm improving. Now our perfectionist mind struggles with that. Because we think pasta is perfect. Pasta, and then when you notice there's room for improvement, you're shocked. What a shock. What a shocking shock. The choir is imperfect. Oh my God. Bum notes. In the kingdom of God, everything is seed form. We are growing. We are going LCF. We are growing. We are not where we were yesterday. We are not where we will be tomorrow. We are going from glory to glory to glory. I'm on my observations of seed. Number three. My third observation is that apart from Jack and the beanstalk. How many of you remember Jack and the beanstalk? Things take time to grow. Somebody shout time. Tell your neighbor, give me time. <laughs> Give me time to grow. Give me time. Yeah, chichicho, what is that? I am growing. I'm getting there. And like Pastor Grace, you looked like that last year. Uh-uh, I didn't. You keep looking too close. The people who saw me last year and skipped a year have seen that I have grown. You know that whole thing about uh, a watched kettle doesn't boil and all of that. When you're too close, you don't see me growing. But people who haven't seen me in some time, they can see the improvement. They see that I'm moving forward. You see, the whole thing about a farmer is a farmer takes a tiny seed. He buries it in the ground. Then it dies. And there is a period called nothing. 
How many of you have been through nothing? And the farmer assures you there is seed somewhere here. The farmer is declaring, my church is going to be the greatest church. My church is growing from glory to glory. And you, who's looking with your naked eye, you're like, I see nothing. There is a period called nothing. And the farmer is looking after, you like, when you want to bring a tractor, you're like, no, 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 no. Don't bring a tractor. Don't bring a grader to pull up LCF. There is precious seed in the ground. Wait, 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 wait. Give us time. Give us time. We are not where we were before. It looks like nothing to you. But underground things are happening. Things are boiling. Roots are growing. We are extending. We are expanding. We are learning how to pray. We are learning how to give. We are learning how to be a community. It looks like nothing. In that invisible period, how many of you does that feel like your MC? You are assuring Jonah, you are assuring onlookers, I have an MC. Yeah. And you're like, Jonah says, how many? How many came? Uh, me and Marvin. <laughs> it is a period of nothing. But the Lord always creates from nothing. He takes nothingness and he makes something out of it. And while, he is, while the seed is in the ground, things look bad. But you assure everybody there's seed in there. Tell your neighbor, give it time. Auntie Elizabeth gave me an orchid on my 60th birthday. And I remember she asked me at some point, how many flowers does your orchid have? And I was like, um. <laughs> one of the things that I am not is I don't have green fingers. So, plant, I mean, I can kill a cactus. Yeah, it's a skill. <laughs> it's, it's a calling. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, so, the orchid died. And, like, within, I, I was so committed to my orchid. And I was watering it. Actually, I was watering it to death. And I was doing what I thought I could do, and it died. So I was looking at it, and I'm like, I think I need to bury this. And then a friend of mine said to me, give it time. Orchids don't die. And I said to him, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're talking about me. My ones. They die. <laughs> he said, you have no capacity. That thing is still alive. He said, leave it. Don't water it too much. Put it near the sunshine and give it time. Walk away. So I walked away. October. I was like October, November, December. January, I spoke to my, another friend and I said, I think it's time for me to bury. She said, no, give it time. Last week. <laughs> hey, Auntie Elizabeth, I got five buds and one has bloomed. Tell your neighbor, give me time. The seed that we have is an incorruptible seed. Like the orchid, it does not die. 
even when it looks like it has failed and it has flopped and it has died and it is time to bury, the seed is incorruptible. It will bloom. It will bloom. Tell your neighbor, I may not look like much now, but I will bloom because I have the incorruptible seed. Just give me time. We may take time, but this seed of the word does not die. We may take time, but we will bloom. The flowers may look like they have faded, but what is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. Number four. We're talking about the seed. Are you getting something? Another thing, you notice that it said that the mustard seed is the smallest. Now the problem with very small things is they are easily missed. So principle number four is you can very easily miss God. God is many things, but one thing he is not, he's not a show off. He will not show up in a neon top with a red wig. Waving a light saying, I'm here, I'm here. He always comes hidden, quiet, gentle. He comes as the still gentle voice. It takes perception and attention to see God. Jacob went to this place where he's being chased after his brother, puts his head down on a pillow. He's depressed. He has been sent away from home. He's down. There is nothing going from him and God appears in that place. And he says, this is the house of the Lord. And I knew it not. Why did God not show up when he was at home, in the comfort at home? God always does his things small and hidden. See, this is the reason why the Pharisees, although they had studied the scriptures, they knew all the signs of Messiah. They had read they had read Isaiah 9, they had read uh, Malachi, they had read about Bethlehem, all of that, but they missed him. They completely missed him. He came even though they had crammed the scriptures. The kingdom seed was right in front of them and they did not perceive it. I feel like we need a whole series on how not to miss God. One man of God once said, and it really struck me, he said, my biggest fear in life is to miss God. Anything else, you know, is by the wayside, but God help me not to miss him. And I feel like we need to teach each other because we always think God is in the big, loud, obvious. But we need to learn principles like do not despise the day of small beginnings. We need to learn that big is not necessarily beautiful. We need to train our spirits to hear the small voice. In our MCs, we've been learning about hearing from God. And one of the things I've, heard, I've realized with God is that God has spoken some very profound things to me in a whisper and I could miss it and if you're not paying attention you will miss it if you're not paying attention sometimes it's a snap picture very like fleeting and yet God is speaking of something that will change your life so if you're waiting for the Lord to come and say pam 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus. It doesn't happen. He's the God of a small voice. 
And therefore, you need to train your spirit to be a seeker, to be an inquirer. You see, seekers are more likely to find stuff. They're more likely to find what's missing. He said that you will seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all, all of your heart. Have you ever lost something that's small? It takes a lot of patience and a lot of attention. So I want to speak to us Liberty Christian Fellowship and say reduce noise in your life. Can I say it again? Reduce the noise. God is not going to shout over your noise. And no, he's not going to shout over your distraction. Can I speak to our young people? One of the tricks of the enemy now, and it's not just for the young, it's for all of us, is to fill our lives with noise. There's social media noise, there's noise from the office, there's noise from the family, there's noise from this, there's noise from the other. Sometimes I think even the circumstances of our lives are just making sure we're distracted. This has happened, that has happened, this has happened, and you find that your whole life is all about trying to cope in a noisy in environment. And the voice of God is snuffed out. Because he speaks when you're quiet. And you need to learn to tell your spirit, be still. You also need to find time to be still. Because everything God is going to do with you is going to come in a seed form. And you'll never find the seeds until you still yourself. So shake somebody and say, pay attention. You could miss it, guys. You could miss it. Uh, there, there are people whose lack of curiosity amazes me. They're never curious about anything. They hear, oh, young people are out there in... St. Helia's, seeking God. Something is happening there. Whatever. They hear God is moving, doing something. This proclaim um, videos. God has changed my life. No curiosity. God could literally come barefoot and attend one of the youth prayer meetings and you wouldn't be bothered. Total lack of curiosity. God comes to seekers. Yeah, God manifests himself to seekers. And that is why for me, if I hear so and so, there's something happening in somebody's life. I am on the case. I will tune in. I will listen. I will take the time to go and see what is God doing. Don't wait for Lazarus to first rise from the dead. Learn to see the rustling of the mulberry tree. Learn to hear there is something going on there. You see, the God seekers, they learn. <laughs> there are some of you, I think your favorite song is, I shall not, I shall not be moved. There's a prayer meeting in me, chum. I shall not be moved. There's revival in worship harvest, I shall not be moved. Like whatever God is doing, let him find me here. Newsflash, he looks for seekers. You see, kingdom people are not like that. Kingdom people find God in small things. Kingdom people are on alert, high alert. Kingdom people see a burning bush. It's a small little bush. It's burning over there. And you have responsibility down here. 
You have your father-in-law's sheep, not even your sheep, your father-in-law's sheep. But something in you is saying, what is God doing over there? Why is the bush not burning? The Bible says concerning Moses, it is when Moses turned to look and say, why is the bush not burning? What is this fire? What is it all about? It is when Moses turned, left his sheep, and went to look at the burning bush. The burning bush, it does not mean that God was standing there, six foot whatever, with a poster saying, Moses, here. It was just a bush that was burning. And Moses said, there's something about this. Let me go and dig and find out. And when Moses came right to the bush is when God said, Moses, take off your shoes. I am here. You see, kingdom people like Anna and Simeon, when they see a baby dedicated in the temple, the baby has not prophesied. The baby has not healed the sick. The baby has not walked on water. But they see something is in this baby. There's something is still in baby form. But I feel there is something happening in this thing. Kingdom people understand seed. They can sense God in the small things. And they understood. Anna and Simeon looked at that baby and they said, now Lord, we are done. And yet there are people who were at Lazarus' grave. And they saw a man who was dead for days rise to life and they doubted. Read the scriptures. There are times when Jesus healed everybody and the Bible says, and some doubted. Now, if you're going to doubt when Lazarus is in front of you, I don't know how to help you. I really don't know how to... <laughs> what can we do for you? If you take... Kingdom people are easily persuaded concerning the things of God. They know how to see the God who is in, who was in the service this morning. They can feel his presence. And they are like, we have not seen the lame walk, but God was here. And I'm going to build my camp here and see what God will say to me. Amen. I want to, I, I need to move quickly. Let me give you the fifth principle that I, I pick up concerning that the seed. Seeds don't just grow. They are grown. Seeds don't just grow. They are grown. There's one thing I've been watching proclaim on, on repeat. Going over things, going back and forth. And one thing that strikes me about worship harvest is intentionality and commitment to multiplication. I want you to say this out loud. Multiplication is not an accident. Mm, say it again. It is intentional. Yes. The seed does not miraculously multiply. Um, Elvin this morning was saying, I was like, hey, come on, Elvin. Because when he was talking about the seed, it's not, he said, how did he say it? He said like, banange. It has grown. I, the seed doesn't, the farmer doesn't just chuck seed in the ground, walk away, and do nothing. There's actually nothing that grows from abandonment. I used to think that if God has spoken in my life, it will happen. So you get the word, chuck it somewhere on the, on the top shelf behind the bags that you never used. You throw it somewhere there. You never do anything with that word. It will not grow. 
Seed does not just grow, it is farmed. It is grown. It is watered. It is fertilized. It is weeded. The farmer takes time to make sure that that seed is fed everything it needs in order for it to grow. Now, the word of God over your life does not just grow. <laughs> we can sow here. But the first parable in Matthew 13 shows you not all seed grows. Because some of it is abandoned. And abandoned stuff does not grow. It must be watered with the word. It must be fertilized. Kingdom people see the word of God over their life from afar and they embrace it. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that they saw these things from afar and they embraced them. Amen. I need to move on quickly. But kingdom seed has to be intentional. Be intentional. Intentional about growth. So God has spoken to you about your MC. What are you doing to grow that seed? Then you'll just say, London is hard. People here, don't, they can't even see my anointing. <laughs> but have you read? Have you studied? Have you proclaimed? Have you declared? Have you fasted? Have you studied around the area? Have you uh, planted seed? Have you done the outreach? What are you doing that will produce? Everything kingdom starts as seed. So we declare multiplication over our lives, knowing that multiplication is going to start as seed. Seed thoughts, seed ideas. Even sin starts as seed. Everything starts as seed. And the more you feed it, the quicker. Genet genetic modification is all about hastening the seed. But we may, we may have problems with it, but we are working on it to bring it to pass. Those prophetic words in your life, and today we're going to just focus in a little bit about the prophetic word over your life. You need to do something. But before I finish, I wanted to emphasize the end of this parable. It ends, uh, yeah, we have to get to the end because the end of a matter is better than a beginning, isn't it? That's what the scriptures say. It ends by saying, let me go back to the KJV. It says, when it has grown, somebody say, when I have grown, I will be large and become a tree so that the birds of the air can come and nest. It does not say that when it is large, when it is grown, it will grow into a big tree that looks amazing and shows its muscles and shows how great it is. It says the reason for multiplication is so that the birds of the air can find somewhere to find rest. I am saying that to say this, Liberty Christian Fellowship, every seed that God is giving to you is for somebody else's benefit. I like this side better than this side. Every seed that God has given to you is so that the tree grows and provides a nesting place for the birds. So that it provides a nesting place for the birds. Increase in the kingdom is not about increase for the sake of increase. Greatness in the kingdom is not greatness for greatness sake. We need to understand the end game. In God giving you seeds in your business, seeds 
um, seeds to lead worship, seeds to do all these things. What he is looking for is for somebody to find rest. Growth and increase in the kingdom is never about you. Mm, we don't like it. Growth and increase in the kingdom is about somebody else. Providing rest for somebody else. You see, the more you grow, the more you prosper, the more people rest on you. The more people lean on you. The more people depend on you. The more you provide for them rest and refreshment and renewal and provision, the more you grow, the more beneficial you are to the community, the more beneficial you are to the church. God does not bless you so you look good. So that the birds may nest on our branches. The branches are not for decoration, my sister. They are there for the birds. They are there as a resting place for somebody. The bigger the tree, the more the birds, the more the nests, the more the provision, the more the refreshment. The nations are looking for places to rest and they are looking for the church to grow so that we can provide them a place where they can rest. Rest from their depression, rest from their burdens, rest from their sickness. And the answer is you. That is why God gave you a word this morning. That is why God gave you a vision. That is why God gave you seed so that somebody will find rest. Not for decoration. See, growth equals responsibility. More growth equals more responsibility. Mega growth equals mega responsibility. Every promotion in life is equal to responsibility. You can say, oh, I want to be a partner. I want to be a partner so that after my name, Grace Seranga CEO. But someone rightly said, the bigger the position, the bigger the headache the more birds are going to come and sit. When I was at the bottom as a paralegal or a secretary, the only person I was responsible was me. Now I have a team and I am responsible for my team. The bigger the growth, the more the responsibility. Hmm. Have you ever, <laughs> people are supposed to rest on you. I remember when we were younger, when someone would come and put their hand on your shoulder here. You do this. <laughs> because you're like, don't nest on me. But tell your neighbor, that shoulder of yours is for me to nest. <laughs> yes. We are supposed to be leaning on each other and receiving from each other. And we're supposed to be growing broader shoulders so that more people can rest. Their elbows can rest themselves on you. Can I can see some of you already. There. <laughs> Have you heard um, that the reward for good work is more work? And you're, some of you are like, in the name of Jesus, not, I refuse it. <laughs> and um, I was seeing, I was reading online, and they were saying that some people refer to that as performance punishment. What a lie. What a lie. The truth is, it's not punishment at all. It is called growth and multiplication and promotion. Do you remember the talents? 
when you did the guys that the guy had that had five talents when he multiplied that what did he get five more he had work when he finished his work he got more work so when sanyu leads a worship service well what do we do we give her more work yes the reward of doing well is more work when your MC is doing well, you do not just celebrate the MC. You split the MC and have more work. Now you become the pastor of two MCs. It is called multiplication. We do not sit there and say, look at me. No, it is about greater responsibility. There are birds out there that need to nest. On your branches. Mm. And some of you are like, ah, I don't like the idea of birds nesting. How inconvenient is that? And you're thinking, what is the net weight of that bird which is going to sit on my branches? Then others of you are saying, but which birds? Are they toilet trained? Or are my branches going to be like a whole mess? Because they're bringing their... I didn't want to say the C word, but... They're not toilet trained. And then other, ones, other people are like, Okay, I don't mind providing a landing place, but Sunday only. Yeah. I'm available on Sunday. Actually, I'm available on Sunday on my duty week. Please do not call me unless it is week three. The rest of the time, my branches are for beauty. Mm -mm. We are a 24-7 resting place. And growth in the kingdom talks about busyness. When we sing, release me, enlarge my territory. Do you know what you're asking for? We are saying, Lord, send me some more work. Send me some more troublesome, not toilet trained people who will come and mess up my plans. But they will find Jesus and they will find rest. And they will be changed when they come into contact with me. Church, multiplication is not a choice. It is our core. It is our creative core. Anything that is not multiplying is dying. In the business world, in work, if you're not moving forward in your career, very soon you'll be eliminated. Yeah. And you'll watch people pass you, whiz past. And the next thing you know, your boss is 20 years younger than you. Why? Because you did not want performance fatigue. You didn't want... The thing is, you pay the price. Either way. You either pay the price for wealth or you pay the price of poverty. Choose your price. God chooses for you and he says, I would that you would prosper. And prospering means greater responsibility. This church will grow. It will grow. It will grow. But you need to grow. You need to take the seed and multiply it. And take personal responsibility for it. And increase and broaden your shoulders. And provide people with a nesting place. So today we say yes. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes to greater responsibility. We say yes to the call of God. We say yes to stirring up that small seed and causing it to grow. We say yes.
Stand to your feet. We want to pray for a minute. This morning as I prayed, God was pointing out to me some people. And I want you to focus in on God for a minute. The thing that God has spoken over your life does not look big right now. But God never does small. He does huge. And as I prayed this morning, I was hearing some people seeing, hearing, I don't know what the, the adjective is there. But I could see some people who are like, why do I have such big dreams? Why, why, why am I obsessed by things that are beyond my size? Have you ever, anybody been in that place? And you feel like the thing that is tugging at your heart and where you are are not congruent. And in your heart, you know you're called to great things. Priscilla, you know you're called to great things. You know the seed is there. The seed, the call. Sometimes for some of us, it's been a while. But when you're in the right place with God, you see things that blow your mind. I was conscious of some, some young people that are so something bigger than you. You know there's something bigger than you going on. Elvin, Sanyo, Sobi, my God. I just saw you with people, so many people surrounding you. Messiah, the seed of the Lord, that thing that brings tears to your eyes. And everybody else is like, but for you, and the call of God, he's, today he's singling out people that have had glimpses of that big tree. And if that's you, you've seen the thousands, you've dreamt them. Yeah, you've dreamt them and you've like, who, me? What? And your today looks very different. I want you to raise your hands if you're that person. Because we're going to give it to God. For some of you, I hear, I see the word missionary. Yeah. Like Subi, I, I just see the word missionary. And you're here today and you're saying, Lord, I don't think I've done justice to the seed. I saw it. I saw a glimpse of it. Young people, the world is crying out. And when you listen, your heart, your heart is tugged. When other people are not seeing, something in your heart is tugged. Every time you hear somebody is stabbed, your heart is like, we can do something about this. I want you to surrender to God and today to sign on the paper that says, Lord, I'm going to pursue this seed. I'm going to water it. I'm going to read around it. I'm going to study it. I am going to give it fertilizer. I'm going to give it time. I am going to listen in. I'm going to press in. I'm going to hear what you have to say and chant what you have to say. I am saying, yes, Lord. I'm saying, yes, Lord. With your hands lifted up, begin to talk to your father about that seed that has been underground for far too long. That seed that looks a little bit like my orchid that has not had any bloom for a long time. And you're giving your heart to him again and saying, Lord, I will give it the right amount of water. I will expose it to the sun. I will bring the manure. I will do what it takes. I surrender. 